Hello again from Normandy. And last night I attempted to film a whole load of my frizzles all together. It's something I've wanted to do um, because I think they're beautiful birds and I'd like people to know about them because I think they're really very good for a forest garden. They can't actually fly very well because of the mutation to their wing feathers, but they can climb, so they can get up trees at night. It was a bit of a foolhardy decision to try and put as many of these birds in one room and on one perch as possible because by their nature I found them to be incredibly independent. So they actually haven't really met socially before, many of them, and it was touch and go um, putting them all together. We only had one real problem, that was with Lacey, who is very dominant female, and she just wouldn't stand next to anybody. She was just terrible. She was just pecking left, right and centre, so we just filmed her on her own at the end. But apart from that, it all went really well. So just as an introduction, what is a frizzle? Well, it really depends on what country you live in as to how a frizzle is classified because in some countries they're seen as a completely separate breed of chicken whereas in other countries they're just seen as the mutation of another breed so you can have Polish frizzles or Cochin frizzles whereas in some countries you just get frizzles. Frizzles were first identified in a drawing uh, which was sent to the Italian naturalist Ulisse Aldrovandi and he included them in the second volume of his Ornithologie which was published in 1599. In the 17th century the ornithologist Carl von Linné, believing them to be a completely different species, he catalogued them under the wonderful name of Gallus crispus, which is Latin for curly bird. Although they look very fancy, and often they've been kept as fancy fowls, they're not at all. They're very rustic, they're very good foragers, they're hardy, they make wonderful mothers, are very quick thinking. I've used them for quail, they're fantastic for quail, and they're really good in a forest garden. So I'd recommend frizzles for everybody. They're fantastic birds, and they're beautiful. Here's a classic frizzled family. We've got a non-frizzled Polish mother and a frizzled Polish father. And from two eggs, we've hatched one frizzle and one non-frizzle. This really is the best way to breed frizzles. If you put two frizzle parents together, you can end up with some of the chicks being just a big fluffy ball. And they're called curlies or woolies. If you breed frizzle to frizzle and you get a woolly or a curly, and I do have some of these, you can get a problem if the feathers are too far apart, you can get a problem with them being cold or you can get a problem with sunburn. So that's one thing to think about. The only downside, and it's not really a downside of frizzles, is they do tend to become dominant within a flock. But what is interesting is that if you've got frizzled brothers, and even a frizzled latent brother, so one from the same hatch but is a non-frizzle, you will find that they actually will run the hen house together. They have very strong family bonds. Frizzles don't fight each other for dominance when they belong to the same family. Quite an interesting phenomenon. I'm not sure why that is, but they seem to be able to cope with power sharing. The same with the females. I've got hen houses where there's female sisters who are frizzles and they're dominant. When the chicks hatch, you may not know straight away which ones are the frizzles. It is quite difficult to see. In fact, I think it's nigh on impossible until the wing feathers form. That's about the third day. These are obviously the feathers which form first for, for very obvious reasons. And you will see them start to curl up. You can see here in these chicks, they're all five to six days old, the frizzled feathers forming. Within four weeks, you can see here, silver gin becoming uh, very much a frizzle. And here he is at, at a year old. In the lineup of my frizzles, you're obviously seeing them in artificial light. To see them in their full beauty, you really need to see them in the daylight. I hope I've persuaded you that you need frizzles and how good they'd be in any sort of garden. Thanks for watching.